Greetings, Glitter Gang, and happy Thursday. Welcome back to Catherine Scraps Live. My name is Catherine, and this is the Vintage Staples album. This is, I believe, part seven. And in part uh, five, we did this spread, um, this insert and this spread, as well as we worked on the, um, we've, uh, filled this bag. So we're getting starting working on um, we're starting working on um, the inserts between page one and page two. Uh, and so this was the first insert. Okay, so um, and then I just did a tutorial on how to make these bags out of vellum or whatever material you have you can use instead of vellum. You don't have to make them out of vellum. But I did just do a tutorial on how to use uh, how to make these own. It's in the playlist if you're watching on YouTube. It's in the folder if you're watching in the archives. Okay, so now we are working on another insert to go in between page one and page two. So we get that loaded look and I think I want to use a larger paper bag. I think I want to use a larger paper bag. And layer it behind. So the question is how to fold the bag. What's the best way to fold the bag? You know, do I want it to actually have a bag foot showing? Or what? Or should we do the folder? Okay. Hmm. So if we fold the bag like this, there's a couple things we can do. If I fold the bag like this and I punch the holes here, then I can slice this off and then this can also be a pocket and this can be a pocket and we don't have to worry about it being too long. Maybe that's just what we'll do. And then we'll also make a file folder. Okay. All right, so again, if you wanna know how to make a bag, there is a tutorial already in the playlist on how to make a bag. All right, so I'm gonna fold the foot of the bag up like so, okay? And I'm just gonna stick a line of tape right here just to hold the flap kind of down. You don't have to, but you know, whatever, it's up to you. Okay, and then this is gonna be a lot easier to do if I do it before it's attached to anything. So I'm gonna cut the top of this off. So I'm just gonna put the foot of the bag so that it's not even to one eighth of an inch, just kind of like just enough to cut it off, okay? And so what that's gonna do is turn this into a pocket as well. All right, now one thing I like to do just to clean it up is to glue this part shut so that it's just the pocket. So, and just, just a little bit of glue for that, okay? And so what you should visualize is that you're putting glue in this triangle, this triangle, but on the inside. Okay, so let's see, Gretchen says that she's using the, and then see here on the back, I have this little corner flipping up. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick it down as well. Gretchen said she's using Graphic 45's Wild and Free to make a, her vintage Staples album, but she's having a hard time using the backs of the papers because the fronts are so pretty. That's the Graphic 45 problem, right? You know, they're just the designs themselves are so pretty that you, you have to make so many tough choices. All right, so now I'm just doing the same thing on the other side. Just gonna flip this up. Yep. 
Yeah, that's the that's the problem with graphic forty five. Definitely. Okay. All right. So now that we're at that stage, we can think about how we're going to decorate this. Okay. So one thing I think I'm going to do, just to reinforce this bag, give it a little bit of strength, is I think I'm going to use that brown cardstock to make a liner with a flap. And we'll make one for the front and the back. Yeah, double-sided paper. So double-sided paper is nice if you're making like this glassine bag because then like the other side of the paper would peek up and then it wouldn't just be white on the inside and that would be nice right um but like most of the time yeah you're just it's just something you can't use in most applications okay so to make that liner what we're gonna do is i'm just gonna measure the foot of the bag which is it's basically any, um, it's two and three quarters. So I'll just make my liner just uh, with a two and a half inch bit to go inside. And then let's say I want a half inch flap to stick over the edge. Do I want a half inch flap or do I want to go like a full inch? Let's go a full inch. So let's cut it to three and a half by, mm, three and a half by, <sighs> five and five eighths, three and a half by five and five eighths, three and a half by five and five eighths, three and a half by five and five eighths. Okay. Three and a half by five and five eighths. Five and five eighths. Five and five. Five and five eighths. Okay, so I'm going to score these at um, two and a half on the three and a half. So I'm going to make sure that this part is going to be on the inside. So then I'm going to score at two and a half. And two and a half. It, it, it is. Crafting without a net is what we are doing. Um, I think I'm about to find out that I didn't measure. Yeah. I, my guess is it's four and four eighths or four and five eighths is what I needed. <laughs> four and five eighths. All right. Let me cut these to four and five eighths. So it's three and a half by four and five eighths. All right, and then they should be able to, yes. Okay, so they can go down and hook in, all right? And then this one, what I wanna do is, do you see how the bag has got this on the inside? I don't want that to get in the way. So I'm gonna make sure that that's towards the back when I slip this down inside so that we're covering those guys so that then when you open the bag bottom it's just smooth all the way down so nothing's going to get cut in any caught in any corners or anything okay so that's going to be that there we go so that's how we'll start there now, of course, we'll need to cover the bag with pattern paper, and then we'll need to decorate the flap with pattern paper as well. I am putting on uh, nails tonight, yeah. Um, so that I will have them for my, va that's actually one of the things I'm doing tonight to get ready. I'll show them to you, because I have the nails ready. People who don't normally watch the show are like, what? 
is happening. <laughs> okay. I think I have them in here. All right. Are they? Oh yeah, here they are. Okay, so here's my vacation nails. So I'll have these next week. Oh, they're kind of hard to see. But they're zebras. So they're zebra. The pinky is full zebra, and then the ring finger is half zebra, half pink. Or it's kind of a hot orange, hot pink. It's not, it's, it looks more orange on camera. It's more pink in person, but it's definitely a very orangey pink. And then, uh, so that's that. So I, that's what I'm gonna do. Tonight when I'm done packing and loading up the car and all of that and I can't break a nail. <laughs> so that's when I'll be doing it. That's when I'll be doing it. What do I attach them with? So the way that I do this is that I, um, well, what these are gel. Okay, so these are gel. Um, gel so that they're very strong and, and flexible. And then what I do is I do a nice gel manicure on myself. So like right on my natural nail, I'll do a nice gel manicure. So I put down, you know, the primer, the base coat, and then I use a glitter polish from OPI. Because if you've ever tried to remove a glitter polish, then you know that they just don't come off. They just don't, right? So that's why I use glitter because that way the polish that's stuck to my nail is like on my nail. And then I sand the top of that off and I put uh, nail glue and then I glue the, um, the glue on top. So the nail right on top. So what I would do is I would have that sanded down just so it it's got some tooth to it. That way I'm not sanding my natural nail. Um, so that helps protect my natural nails from the nail glue and from, and from all that. So then what I do is, um, and then I'll glue the, the painted nail on top and that's how I get my long painted nails. And that, what that enables me to do is I have, I can paint the nail, I can use both hands to do the painting um, instead of trying to paint like my right hand with my left hand and all of that. And then these are the ones that I've taken off that I like enough to keep. So there's like Santa from a lot of, you've seen all, you've seen all of these. I have the Wicked Witch of the West nails, the East, the Wicked Witch of the East nails. Uh, the rainbow nails, I'm probably going to use these again this summer. You remember the rainbow nails? So, oh yeah, these are a good summer nail too. I've got the, the leaves. So, yeah. I've got plenty of bright colored nails. I don't have as many holiday type nails, but that's okay. I have two holidays, so it's all right. All right. Anyway, that was a little digression. Uh, <laughs> so, but, um, so next week I'll have those nails on. Uh, provided nothing happens to them over vacation. So that's my, that's my process is I paint the nails. I have little stands that hold them with like ticky, t with a sticky, like what you would put a poster in your locker with. So, you know, stuff sticks to it, but not really blue tack, I think it's called. So I stick the nails to the little stands with blue tack and then I can, you know, hold the stand and I can turn the nail whichever way I need to turn it to paint it. And then I have a little magnet uh, that they all sit on so that I can take the stands. The stands have magnets in them as well. And so the stands magnetize to this little metal circle I have, and I put that under the gel lamp, and that's how I cure the nails themselves. And then I do the full gel manicure on myself, you know, primer, base coat, uh, glitter polish, top coat, the whole thing, cure that on my hands, and then I sand the top down put nail glue and I've learned over time to more nail glue than I think is probably better. 
um, so I don't get any spots that don't have any glue at all. And they, they last for a long time. They last for a long time, weeks. So, all right, okay. All right, so now <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and um, do something with this. So we're going to pick our pattern paper and let's, let's just think. So it's going here. No, here. Yeah, it's going here. Okay, I might um, put it over top of this. We'll see. So it's going here. So we just need to keep this color palette in mind when we are picking our paper. Um, and one thing I'm thinking is that I can probably use, if I have two of these, yes, I do. I can probably use these on the flaps. Yes, I can. All right, so I can use those on the flaps. And then um, under the flaps, yep, I can use these two, one on the front. Or I want something kind of yellow, something kind of yellow. Well, now I thought I wanted something yellow, but maybe do I want to pull this in? Do I like that more than that? I don't know. I feel like the yellow actually is probably more striking. So, all right. So, got those. I'm just going to flip this over to the back and see if there's anything on the back that I think would be amazing. Okay. I mean, the, the camera's a little busy with the floral. So, all right, there we go. We're okay. All right. Oh, wait. Uh, okay. All right. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right. So this is, let me remeasure since I was wrong last time. So I need something that's one, three and three and a half by uh, four and a half. Three and a half by four and a half is what I need to cut this. So let me do that really quickly. Cut these down to three and a half by four and a half. And they're already three and a half. So okay. And I'll ink them with the brush corduroy. And I, like I said, I'm being quite messy with the ink. <laughs> so Gretchen's going through her stash and she hasn't found any of her paper bags, but she did find shimmery envelopes. So good work, Gretchen. And Melanie says she's packed 30 page kits for a June retreat. And enough stuff to make seven mini albums. So good work. Okay, so for this, I'm going to cut this down to um, seven eighths, okay, by four and a half. Seven eighths by four and a half. Because I want a thin line. Ooh, that looks cool. <laughs> that looks good. All right. All right. So there we go. All right. So now we can ink those. These are the scraps. Let's not ink the scraps. Okay, 
All right. So now we can start attaching things. So I'm going to pull these out. And we'll go ahead and stick these to the flaps. It already looks awesome. This looks great framed in the dark brown. Apparently in checking out her stash for staples, Gretchen also has de determined that she has too much paper. So now I'm going to stick these in and it'll be easier if I put the one in the back first. Okay. All right, so I'm trying to think the best way to do this. And I think the best way to do this is to put tape on the flap on the inside about an eighth of an inch down from the score line so give yourself room okay you don't need to be right at the top and then also put a little bit right in the middle okay but don't put anything on the leading bottom edge and then also just to make it a little easier on yourself cut the corners around the corners on this bottom edge so that they're not uh, pointy um, okay, so now you can remove. Okay. All right, now you're going to make sure you get hook over all of this stuff, everything, so that this is over everything except that little front bit and then bend it towards the back. And then once it's bent towards the back, go ahead and press it into place, okay? So now it's in there, okay? And now that's there. And then we can just go ahead and stick this down. Cool, I don't know how to measure anything, apparently. Oh, it's not three and a half, it's two and a half. Duh, Catherine. It was three and a half for the thing that goes inside it because it has an inch sticking out of the top. Oh, wow. Are you cuter? I mean, I think that is cuter. But she should probably be on the front. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is what happens when you're just winging it. You know, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know where every single paper is going to go. You don't know who's going to look good where. You don't know. Plans get made. Plans get trashed. Now the one, the back of the other one is not as cute. So we will use the front. So again, these are two and a half by four and a half now. That's their size.
Okay. All right, so now we'll just add our tape to the other side and stick that flap in. So once again, down from the top about an eighth of an inch. You don't want to be right at the top. And then just a little bit right in the middle. around your corners as well. That just makes it easier to slide in and out if it doesn't have a corner to get caught on things. Although this one should slide in pretty easily because there's nothing for it to get caught on, yeah. Okay, and then once I have it in, I fold the flap down and then line the two flaps up with each other and then press. And now looky here. So you've got this perfectly smooth pocket. I can see all the way through now because this is, this is not attached in the book. But once we put our two rings, you know, you won't be able to, we'll put holes on either side and we'll, we'll actually be using four eyelets because they'll be here and here and here and here, and then it'll go right through but this is what it looks like now. If you want to, can you leave this one up like this so that when you stick something in, it's framed? Yeah, you can. You can do, you know, whatever you want because you're just winging it. <laughs> so <laughs> you can totally just wing it. In fact, all right, so don't, you know, don't worry. All right, so let's continue. So now, We've got this far. Let's finish our bag. So now we need something to go here. So something that's gonna work with this, with this, with this. Okay. All right. Let's go and investigate our papers. See what we see. What do we like? What do we not like? I wonder about using something like this. You know, the only problem with using something like this is just that it doesn't quite go, it's hard to center, so maybe not. Maybe we'll use a more like geometric type pattern like this, or even these fans could be funny. I actually kind of quite like the fans. I think they are kind of funny. Um, or this plaid, ooh, the plaid is also interesting. The plaid is also interesting. Or just old timey stuffs. <laughs> so we have rulers notebook, typewriter keys. Let's go ahead and use the plaid. No, the fans, because they're just weird. Let's just use the fans because they're weird. All right, so this, what's left of the bag is six by four and three quarters. So we need five and three quarters wide by four and a half long. Five and three quarters by four and a half. Okay, there we go. And you can, again, you can put it like this if you prefer it like this. So we'll go ahead and stick that down. You know, we're in an old office. All right, gonna go ahead and stick this down. Right. 
Ta da! Beautiful. Okay. Okay. And then whatever we want on the back. So the back, just consider that the back will be here. So what would look good on this pile of stuff? I think this. So four and a half by five and three quarters. And we've got that. But I actually already changed my mind because I saw that and I loved it. So now we just need something to go on this. So let's look at cut aparts. Gretchen's making bums for other people. She's in the chat making butts. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> it was just a typo, but <laughs> but um, yeah, it's uh just <laughs> the the owl got removed from the bums, so. People in the chat making bums. There's people in the chat making bums. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to turn this into a journaling spot. Well, some people don't have any bums. I actually, I understand. I was tragically born without a bum as well. So. All right, so that'll be a little journaling spot. And then we'll put the airplane here. Okay. Some people, <laughs> some people do have bums implanted and I was watching some video about the future of body trends, uh, what directions bodies are gonna be trending. Um, and I was kind of like fascinated by the concept. It's just one of those things I randomly clicked on cause I was like, are we actually predicting this is where we are now. We're predicting like what types of bodies are going to be popular. So the person was talking about, you know, different types of bodies have been different, have been popular over time, which is true. And they were trying to figure out where we're going to go from the current uh, trend that sparked the like BBL surgeries, um, which is like skinny waist, thick hips, thick thighs very hourglass, you know, that, that body. And the reason the person thought that that body was trending out was because Kim Kardashian had her butt implants removed, which I learned from this. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so I guess Kim is not doing the bum anymore. Um, so, uh, one of the theories was that we're going to go, we're going to see a resurgence of the hard body, which was a thing in the 80s, which was very fit, lean, muscular kind of was going to be a, a thing. And that that is starting to trend this just very, very lean, but very muscular. So not skinny. Um, <laughs> Ella. <laughs> Ella. 
they are it, they are not loving the hard body trend in the chat. <laughs> Gretchen, Gretchen wants to start a cake body trend. <laughs> the soft body trend. That's what we need, the soft body trend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just a visceral reaction. No, but it was really interesting. It was really interesting. I did really think the video was very interesting. I liked what the woman had to say. I found the hard body movement, like the history of that in the 80s, very interesting as well. It was like an offshoot of the physical fitness, like Jane Fonda workout videos kind of thing, but like more lifting more weights to get even more muscular, not quite a bodybuilder, although uh, women were, there was an increase in women who were bodybuilders at the time. So um, that was all very interesting. And one, one thing that I do think is kind of good <laughs> for me is that, um, you know, because I've been doing this project all year where by the end I set myself the goal at the beginning of the year I know I've talked about this before but I set myself the goal at the beginning of the year to by the end of the year meet the World Health Organization's physical fitness recommendations for optimal fitness and um, what, the, what those are <laughs> are to work out with moderate intensity for 300 minutes a week or with uh, vigorous intensity or high intensity for 75 minutes a week. And um, to also do two weightlifting or strength training sessions a week that within those two sessions work every major muscle group of the body. Um, so the easiest way to do that, in case you're wondering, is to do the front of your body and the back of your body. Um, so um, that you um, can do your upper body and your lower body on both days. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a way to split it to do the front of your body and the back of your body. Um, and I learned this from the LA firefighters. That's what they do. They work the front of their body, then the back of their body, front of their body, back of their body. Um, so anyway, I'm only doing my upper body right now. Um, and that's because I'm introducing things very slowly because I'm following the process of, I'm following the... Uh, philosophy of minimal do you like this angled like that or do we like it more structured like that kind of like it angled let's just let's do an angle uh, minimal viable effort which is where you set your bars s for progress so low that you cannot fail yeah I agree Kathleen definitely angle um, so so low that you can't fail so like you know let's say you don't exercise at all you haven't exercised in like 10 years they would suggest that you say, if I do one push up every day, I've exercised every day. And then of course the idea is once you're down on the floor, you're probably gonna do as many push ups as you can do. You know, you're not gonna just do one push up and then stop or whatever. And, and you know yourself, right? So you just decide, you know, what will work for you. And so that's what I've been doing. All right, so anyway, um, that's what I've been working on and because of that my legs are very lean now so my legs are very lean um, and so I need like that's why I've been concentrating my upper body um, strength st concentrating on upper body strength training and the reason why my legs are very lean is because I primarily get the my cardio from biking so that's just been making my legs kind of strong and lean on their own. Not, I mean, not very lean compared to like all humans, but very lean compared to how they were earlier this year and the rest of my body. So I just want, I'll try and show you. Oh, my sister just texted me that the strawberries and cream 
nothing but cakes are in and they're going to be in until 515. So like I have to eat them today or whatever. Ugh. The strawberries and cream, if you don't know, the nothing but cakes strawberries and cream is the best nothing but cakes. And they only have it for two months out of the year. And like we're not eating processed food right now. So anyway, um, I got my phone to, oh yeah, to show you a picture of my leg because it's kind of <laughs> interesting. Okay, so this is my entire body. I was trying on a dress. The dress looks terrible. Okay, so there you get an idea. So you can see in, in my face and my arms, I'm still overweight, whatever. But like, look at what is happening to my leg. <laughs> look at it. Even now, even if I'm just sitting in a chair, just like relaxed, there's a separation on my upper leg between like my quads and the muscles on the top of my leg and my hamstrings and the muscles on my bottom. So like my legs don't look like soft anymore. Um, so, I mean, that's just, you know, and that's just happening from just doing the bike. So anyway, um, so that's why I'm not working the muscles of my legs right now, because it's just kind of like, they're doing fine on their own. Um, so right now I'm up to, let me do the math to see where I am. So I'm up to 180 minutes a week now. That's I'm up to 180 minutes. So I'm more than halfway and it's only May. So I'm more than halfway to my 300 minutes and we're in May. And the goal is to be at 300 minutes by, you know, the end of December. So, so I'm up to 180. So. A week. Not all at once, you know, I don't like do it for three straight hours. <laughs> but, um, all right, should we put, I almost want to put like just a little bit of this sticker poking out the side of that. Oh, I don't know if I actually think that that's going to add anything, so never mind. I kind of want to... Yeah, I'm going to add this star right here. Barbara Jean, that would make total sense to me. Um, I have a magnetic resistance bike because it's so hot here that exercising outside for like over half the year is just not a thing I want to do. So I have a, a magnetic resistance bike, very quiet, very quiet. Um, and that's what I use. And I got one that was spe specifically made for people who are like in a rehab kind of situation who like really need... My work, yeah, my goal is to work up to 300, 300 minutes a week, 300 minutes a week. So the world, the world health organization says 300 minutes a week of moderate exercise. And I do moderate exercise. So that's my goal. Okay. So now we just need to add something here. So just what are we going to do with this? Let's go ahead and let's cut this out. But yeah, my goal is by the end of the year to have the routine of just consistently doing 300 minutes a week of moderate exercise. And I got, uh, we've turned the guest room into a gym. And it is, there's a TV in there for guests. Um, so I got a Google Chromecast for it. And so whatever, if I'm playing YouTube on my phone, you know, I can 
um, I can, um, I'm going to cut this out. Um, if I'm playing YouTube on my phone, I can just move it from, send it to the TV, send it to the Chromecast. And it just, whatever I'm playing on my phone just shows up on the TV. I'm going to cut this five out so that it's got its shape. And that keeps me from getting totally bored. So I watch a lot of video essays and things like that. So like Ella was talking about how she's been watching YouTube about haute couture and learning like what it means for something to be haute couture versus just like an expensive luxury fashion item. Um, and I, that is something that I will get into where I uh, like am interested by haute couture in the process. I'm not a particularly fashionable person, but the artistry of some of these uh, people that I've learned about, like Iris Van Herpen, for example, oh my gosh, she's incredible. I mean, just then she's working with all kinds of like amazing artists. Like she works, like she works with a perpetual motion machine artist or, or like a, and so she like a kinetic machine artist. So some of her dresses are decorated with like small machines that take energy from the movement of the person just like walking around existing and uses that somehow to power the dresses so the dresses move independently of like wind the person whatever um though there it's like science fiction clothing it's it's amazing um she should have done like the costumes for dune <laughs> you know um but like uh yeah her stuff is incredible just incredible So anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, so yeah, to be haute couture, it has to be, like you have to have so many fittings, like, you know, the person has to sit for so many fittings or, uh, and it has to be entirely handmade, no machines. And there's only a certain number of people who can be even making haute couture, like, so there can be other designers who are high-end luxury designers, but they're not making haute couture, you know? And it's, you know, it's just interesting. It's just interesting. But um, yeah, and I don't know if Ir Iris Van Herpen technically makes haute couture or not, but I've learned about her from these channels that talk about couture in that way. Um, so yeah, academically, I, it's just artist, the artistry of that is very interesting. I watch um, a video, I've watched uh, Hans Atelier. That's a channel, he's a leather worker, a, a, um, a custom leather worker. And his specialty is people bring, um, people bring their old worn out luxury bags and then he cuts them, com he completely disassembles them and then remakes them into new bags, one of a kind bags. He's an incredible artist. Um, and again, that's Hans Atelier, that's the channel. Um, but like, uh, and then the history of fashion, there's a lot of history of fashion channels as well that are very interesting. But whatever you're interested in, there's a channel. Like I told you all um, a while back that I went on an urban planning kick and I watched a lot of videos on how to plan cities in ways that you have high population density, but everyone feels like they have space and people can walk and people can work and people can have recreation and it's not just like malls and apartments and things like that where you have to drive everywhere so there's all kind like whatever you can learn about all kinds of fascinating stuff on youtube just really it's just a lot it's there's a lot out there so anyway watch a lot of stuff on the history of film i recently learned that when film became popular so 1930s ish er, you know because like before that it was not seen as high art the theater was seen as high art and film was seen as like a lowbrow low class thing um and so in the beginning like pretty much it was very democratic like anyone could, was could make movies and you know all kinds of groups of people were making movies women 
you know, marginalized people of all kinds. And then, like, once film became profitable, that's when the white men came in and took it over. Um, but that it existed for a time, this kind of parallel filmmaking in Hollywood where the people who had been creating film, like the women and um, uh, people who spoke Spanish is another one, um, things where they were making Spanish language films, what they would do is once they were relegated to crew, like unskilled crew, but they would stay, so they would film the like mass market meant to go in the theaters version of the film during the day with like and then at night the crew that did like the unskilled labor during the day who had been skilled filmmakers before it got taken over they would stay and then they would film the versions at night for the so i just recently learned that they're that they filmed at the same time on the same set there was a Spanish language version of Bella, of the Dracula that stars Bella Lugosi, and it's supposed to be way better. So now I want to track that down because now I'm really curious. But they would do that. They would stay at night and they would reuse the sets to make, like the Spanish language version or the Chinese ver language version of the thing, you know. And they would have all all actors who spoke the language, etc. And I just thought that was fascinating and, of course, literally had no idea. <laughs> so literally had no idea that that ever went down. I thought that was super interesting. Um, people who have seen both versions say that the Spanish language version is much better. So that's really intriguing of Dracula specifically. Um, so, like, just stuff like that. Just there's this whole... that there are these secret histories to things, you know, that are so amazing. And it's so cool of people to take the time and the energy to share them. And I just like, that's really great. Okay, so I think our little bag is done. So now we're ready to punch our holes. Um, and then we can make inserts. Once we have the holes, then we'll know how big to make our inserts. So let me get my do i have didn't i make a whole template oh here it is all right okay so i'm just going to line this up so that it's kind of even on either side and then i'm going to mark these holes so anyway you can learn a ton of stuff And even stuff that I don't, like, care about, you know, it's not like I super care about haute couture. I'm not going to save up to buy a Dior dress or whatever or, you know, but it's just still interesting to, like, celebrate the artistry and to see the history of these things, you know, and how they've come to be. Just like I'm not going to go back to school to become an urban planner so I can make my own city, you know, <laughs> But it's still interesting to learn about what makes a good city, you know. Or at least it is interesting to me. So, all right. So now I'm going to add the holes, or not add the holes, but add the grommets and eyelets. Okay, so you're at 150. So you're very, um, so you've, you're, you're halfway there. You're halfway to the World Health Organization's suggestion for optimal fitness. By the way, the FDA's suggestion for optimal fitness is 150 minutes. So the World Health Organization's recommendation is twice the FDA's, which I find also interesting. Alright. 
so I'm just setting it with the crocodile. And the setting I use for these self-piercing grommets is A. Um, A1. A1. Yeah. All right, so what I'm going to do is, um, so that it's clean on the front and clean on the back, I'm going to do it so that the squished part is on the middle. So I'm just going to reverse what I just did. All right, beautiful. So now I should be able to hook these on right here. I guess I have to open all my rings. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now it looks like this when it's just sitting in there. So it is going to pop up a little bit unless I glue this flap down. So I think I will glue this flap down. The Big Bite does set these grommets, but I use a different setting on the Big Bite. So let me get out my Big Bite and I'll tell you. Because the Big Bite's a little bit a little bit different. And by the Big Bite doesn't work quite, something about the Big Bite, it doesn't work quite as well. Um, okay, so it's, if, if you can use the handheld crocodile, I recommend using the handheld crocodile. Obviously there are times when you can't and you have to use the Big Bite. Um, and it just doesn't quite, work as well. In fact, let me just show you. So on the Big Bite, I use a, is it? No, no, no. It's okay. So this is the, um, so let's put it on on one and see how we do. Okay, so we've got the pokey out one A. So this is A1. So I'll set it in one of the ones that didn't work out. And I'll set them both so we can look at them side by side. All right, so I'll set one with the big bite and I'll set one with the crocodile. All right, so first of all, it's a lot harder to set with the Big Bite because it has to go like this. So it's, you're working upside down, so that's extremely annoying. Um, so that makes the Big Bite a lot harder to use for this purpose. Um, sometimes if you're really careful, you can put the eyelet down and then you can put the paper through it and hook the paper on to the hook the paper on to the big bites like thing and then squeeze and look at it. You see that? It doesn't quite do anything. So I found you can't use A1. It doesn't quite round it. Alright. So then I'm gonna try two, but I don't think two is, I think the one that works the best I think is four, cause that's what it was on when I got it. Yeah, it just really doesn't, 
it just doesn't work quite the same. Let me try them all. So I tried one. Let's try two. Will it work better if I flip it over? Nope. Yeah, it just doesn't work. The big bite really just doesn't work. So, yeah. That I, I, sometimes you can make it work. Um, but mostly I just, um, I just don't think it really does. But there's something about the way the big bites made that it just doesn't have the same t torque. I think it's because its handle is so much longer. That's my theory as this one, but it just doesn't do it. Whereas I'll show you what the crocodile will do. Now the crocodile, I don't think will close it completely on a thin piece of paper, just a single sheet. So you will see that they're, that it's still gonna be loose, I think, once I'm done. But you'll see the difference in looseness. Okay. So. There we go. Okay, so yeah, it's not t perfectly flat. It pokes out a little bit, but this one is like, like you can hear it rattling away in there. So there is a big difference. So I haven't quite figured out how to get the Big Bite to do these cleanly and I'm not sure it's possible. Um, all right, so, okay. Is this page done? No, we have to make an insert. Okay, so let's make an insert. So we've got two inserts. We've got, uh, we're gonna put two tags in here or tags and uh, cards or something like that. So um, this size tag is what I want. So, this is, is it seven and a half? Let me get a, cause I just eyeballed this. So, okay. So we need to lose, we can, we could stand to lose an eighth of an inch, which would make it seven and a quarter. So seven and a quarter by four and a quarter tag is what will go in, what will go in this, so. All right, so I'll make a couple seven and a quarter by four and a quarter tags and we'll stamp them, two of them to go in here. Okay, seven and a quarter by four and a quarter. I am gonna be using the uh, fresh cream to make the seven and a quarter by four and a quarter tags. And then this is cayenne pepper, which is what I'm using for the things. And I believe seven and a quarter plus four and a quarter gets me, I can do a pinwheel, right? If I cut it down to, no, seven and a quarter plus four and a quarter. Seven and a half plus four and a half is 12, right? So yeah, I'm gonna cut them to seven and a half by four and a half and then trim them. So I put my paper at four and a half Technically, I just put this paper at four and a quarter. So let me just scooch it over. Okay, so I put my paper at four and a half and I cut up to four and a half and then I turn it once, put it at set, uh, four and a half, cut up to four and a half and then one tag will fall off. Then put it at four and a half and cut up to four and a half and another tag will fall off. And then put this at four and a half. And all right, now I've got all of my tags. All right, so I'm gonna cut these all down to four and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And then we will attach them, or we will turn them into tags. 
stamp them, etc. All right, so I now have four seven and a quarter by four and a quarter inch tags. And I'm just gonna use a tag I already have to <laughs> mark the holes and punch the holes. So I've now punched my hole and I'm going to use my large angle punch and I just have to empty it because it's cutting things crooked now so I'm going to just quickly try and get as much out of it as possible. You do have to empty your corner chompers periodically or else they'll stop working because they fill up with paper. And I just stick a paper piercer in it to kind of, I hold it upside down over my recycling bin and stick a paper piercer in it until um, some paper falls out. And then I'm, you can close that lid again. So those are done. So now I'm going to stamp them and then we'll add their holes. So to make the holes, we need eight. So I'm going to start with a three quarter inch punch. I'm just going to punch you know, a line of them about an inch apart. with my quarter inch hole punch. And then I'm gonna punch around those with my three quarter inch hole punch. And by punching the small hole first, I can line up and get a nice ring a lot easier. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, plenty. All right, and then all I do to attach these is just put some dots of glue around the hole. give it a press. You finished Lager Queen and by the end you were delighted. Okay. Well that sounds very, very promising. I'm going to take it out on Friday. I think. So I still have it for our live show, but my hope is to read it by the pool 
when Mr. Lifeguard's in his conference. This, so when he's at his conference, like this weekend we'll be together doing vacation stuff, but Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday he'll be at his conference. So we'll... Um, I'll be entertaining myself all day. So I'm planning to hopefully read that while I'm enjoying the sun. There better be sun. <laughs> um, so just as a reminder, The Logger Queen of Minnesota is our book club book this month. So we'll be discussing it in the classes, not next Thursday, but the Thursday after that. So the last Thursday of the month. So if you want to participate in that during the live show on that day, which will be in the afternoon, you can join us for that. Or it'll probably also be part of this playlist that you're watching if you're watching on YouTube. Because um, <laughs> we will not be done with this album by then at the current rate. So <laughs> that it is going, taking. All right, so. All right, so I'm going to use the Misty to stamp my stamps on here. Okay. And I'm going to use Versafine and Onyx Black, which is kind of my favorite stamping ink. All right. And then the way that I can stamp it, um, like if I put this here, the hinges of the misty are in the way, so I can't, but I can flip it over. Without letting it touch the ink, I can line it up with this corner so that it kind of falls, and then I can press it. And then I can get a pretty good image so so once again I'm lining the corner of the tag up with the corner of the mat and then letting it fall and then I'm just going to rub over it with a photo back there we go All right, okay, so now it's a lot easier to do the back because I just line the back up here and just let that sit there and then that'll do it. So yeah, the Lager Queen of Minnesota and that's lager as in the beer, L-A-G-E-R and um, not as in logging. And it's supposed to be about a beer dynasty <laughs> and some kind of family drama within this beer dynasty. So I'm hoping to learn a lot about beer. Just, I love learning about crazy stuff. Um, we've been watching Ted Lasso and I will say that while I really love Ted Lasso, one thing that I think is kind of lacking is I don't feel like I'm learning much about soccer at all. Um, and I do kind of like to learn like some stuff. Like I told you, I read that book about fencing. 
and I thought that was really, really great to learn about fencing because I knew nothing about fencing. Um, but it could just be me. I guess people probably watch it because they already like soccer. So. All right. Okay, so now we can put the Misty to the side for a second here. And then these, I'll just put them in the pocket. You don't think a lot of people like to learn while watching TV? Oh, okay. All right, so now we've got two little tags in there. And of course we can add strings to the tags if we want, we could add strings to all of these tags if we want to have that like stringy office supply look. That's certainly something that we can do. Um, okay, so now we just need to make something to go in here. All right, so I think maybe we'll put like some little tags from the collection in there because um, there was a sheet I think it was the bow bunny that had the sheet of tags yeah here we go we've got these uh, these three little tags here. So let's go ahead and um, cut them out. And And then the only problem is that they're not tags on the back, but we can, because it's double-sided paper, so, but we can fix that. All right, so let's just see if we like how these look in here. Okay, so they're cute. All right, sticking out. So we'll go ahead and do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna find some kind of journal-y type paper to go on the back. And let's get that scalloped book that I have. Here it is. That has all the different journaling spots, this one. And just find things to stick on the back. They don't even have to be journaling spots. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll take, we'll do this chevron. This little yellow thing. Sure, let's just do this little plaid. Okay. So all I'm gonna do kind of just glue them together. I know I've gone over time, but there isn't a show tonight. Okay, so let's just go until we finished this element. Okay, so 
So let's just let that sit for a second. Although I said earlier that I'm not eating processed food, but I'm going to eat a ton of processed food <laughs> while we're on vacation. So I'm going to try to move a lot on this vacation. So when we're at Universal Studios, of course, we'll be doing a ton of walking and all of that. So I'm not, that's not a problem. But I definitely think once we go to the resort, I am going to have to start my days in the gym. And then after I've done a nice 45 minute workout, then I can go lay by the pool. Well, and I'm planning on swimming, Ella, at the end. So what I want to do is I want to read by the pool, like, um, and then like take a dip, you know, to cool down that sort of thing. So I am planning on doing some swimming and it does look like the pool is big enough for swimming. It'll depend on how many people are there, of course. But I do have a new suit. Um, so I'm, I'm good. I have my suit from last year, which uh, still, still works and then a new suit as well. So I have two suits I can bounce back and forth, like if one of them's still wet, you know, I won't have to put a wet suit on. So that's all good. My mom told me not to get any weird tan lines or I would, so I, would so I wouldn't ruin my sister's wedding. Now, and I both, uh, both of the swimsuits go straight across, so there's no straps. So, um, okay, they're gonna look so cute on the back. So I won't have to worry about weird tan lines. My biggest chance of creating weird tan, yeah, putting on cold, wet swimsuits is gross. So that's why if you're going on a swimming vacation, bring two so that you can alternate them and hang them up. I know, is she, it is funny. She is like, so I have, as long as I don't get a sunburn walking around Universal with like a tank top on, I should be fine because neither swimming suit has straps that go over the shoulders. Um, but, you know, I ha will have to be very good about sunscreen at Universal so that I don't, not that I'm bad about sunscreen anyway, but um, I will have to make sure I like reapply if I go on a water ride or something like that. So I don't get any weird tan lines at Universal from like my shorts or my tank top or any of that. Or I'll have to slather, well, my sister and I were talking about how I could put zinc on my entire body except for where the, where the strap lines were. <laughs> and, then, and then I could maybe try and fix it that way and then go and like sit in the sun <laughs> and try to like even it out. <laughs> so that was one of the things we joked about. So... Well, I do wear a hat to protect my face anyway. I have a straw hat that I like. I even wear it in the pool a lot if I'm not gonna, if, when I'm not act actively swimming. So um, I do like to protect my face um, for sure. And then it has the you know, side effect of also protecting my scalp. Okay. Uh, 
All right, so now I'm going to put the same eyelets into these tags so that they match everything else on the page. And then we'll ink them and stick them in. Okay. Maybe I'll ink them before I, that way I won't forget. I wonder how many tubes of zinc it would take to cover my entire body. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to get, once I'm done with the show, Mr. Lifeguard is getting off work at four. So we're going to get everything packed and load up the car and do all that. And then tomorrow, we just, all we have to do is walk out the car, out the door. You know, no rushing around in the morning trying to do stuff, find stuff, you know. So we're going to do it all tonight. And then once it's totally done and there's no more like, laundry because I like to before I go on vacation I like to put like fresh sheets on the bed and do any laundry that's lying around so that when you come back you come back to like nice clean sheets and no laundry to do so you can just put your vacation laundry in the washer and just wash that and it's just easy easy you know so once that's all done, then I'm going to do my nails so that I can't possibly break a nail <laughs> before my trip. All right, so now we've got our little three tags. go in here. Okay. Well, look how cute our book is turning out. <laughs> ah, it's so adorable. Okay. All right, so here is the first spread so far. So we've got this page element, which we did on Monday. And then today we've done our paper bag tag holder. And of course you can stick more things in here. You can just stick photo mats in this bag. It'll hold photo mats, journaling spots, whatever. Then our, there's our cute little back. And then we have our bag that we did on Monday as well. And so that'll lay down like that. So now we just need maybe one more element. Um, if we do one more element, it'll be this file folder uh, so that we have room to put a ton of stuff and it'll just be behind them. I don't know, behind them or in front of them. I think behind them. Or maybe between them. Ooh. Between them would be cute, actually. So maybe we'll put one between them so it'll be like that. Um, okay, so we'll start off that next week either adding a file folder or moving on to the next page. But as it is, this is where we are. I have shown you um, how to make every staple that I've used so far now. So every staple that I've used so far has a tutorial in this playlist bags, all of it, tags, all of it. All right. So now it's just a matter of, you know, are we going to add a file folder? Are we going to move on to the next page? What are we going to do? But I do think how it's looking right now is extremely cute. Like lots of little 
hidden spots, lots of places to add your bits and your bobs. So I think it is going to look nice and loaded and fun by the time we're done. So I am actually really enjoying this album so far, even though the progress is slower than I thought it would be, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, here it is. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. So there we go. This is the bag, um, the, the tag bag, the bag of tags. So um tonight i will not be back at 9 p.m like normal like i said i have a trip i'm leaving for tomorrow morning so i have got to do all my packing and getting ready and all of that tonight um so we're going on vacation i'm gonna have fun of course i'll let you know how everything went next week shows will be normal next week 2 p.m eastern usa time and 9 p.m eastern usa time we will be continuing this album um and we will either start with a file folder or page two, whichever, you know, we're feeling at the time. And then, um, of course, everything I've done so far is in a playlist on YouTube and in a folder in the archives. And so thank you so much for joining me, everyone. Um, I hope you are enjoying the Vintage Staples album, the Crafting Without a Net, just going with the flow, chilling, using stuff you already have, making it work. Um, I've been really enjoying it, so I hope you have as well. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye now.